I greet you all with an Islamic greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be unto you. I'm your host, Fari Burz Sepernia. Welcome to Muslim TV of America. The universe of which Earth is an extremely small fragment has been created for a specific period of time. All of the heavenly bodies, including the Earth, will come to an end. The termination of the present creation starts the process of the last day or the day of judgment. All creations, visible or invisible to us, will be terminated by the command of Allah with the exception of those he would like to continue. The process of termination is not haphazard. It has been scheduled in a systematic manner. A dreadful sound or an alarming sound like that of a trumpet has been associated with the collapse of all that is in the heavens and the earth as per the Holy Quran. However, this does not mean that the sound will terminate life. It is just an alarm. The heavenly bodies like suns, planets, stars, galaxies will be torn apart this chaos in space will be so dreadful that the sky will look like a red ointment or a molten brass. The Quran describes the scenes of destruction extensively. We are presenting a few ayahs here. Surah 69, Ayah 13. Then when one blast is sounded on the trumpet, 14, and the earth is moved and its mountains and they are crushed in powder at one stroke, 15, on that day shall the great event come to pass. Surah 81, Ayah 1. When the sun with its spacious light is folded up, 2. When the stars fall, losing their luster, 3. When the mountains vanish like a mirage, 6. When the oceans boil over with a swell. Surah 99, Ayahs 1 through 8. When earth is shaken in her final quaking, and earth throws forth her burdens, and every man says, What is happening to her? On that day she will report her news which your Lord has inspired her with. On that day men will appear in droves to be shown their actions. And whoever has done an atom's weight of good will see it, while whoever has done an atom's weight of evil will see it. Resurrection is the next milestone after the present creation is terminated. It is an essential part of the Muslim belief. The trumpet sound is heard the second time. All the dead people from Prophet Adam to the last day will be brought back to life, and this process is known as resurrection. This is one of the life sequences of the human being, and it is inevitable. Throughout history, people have wondered how the people who died a million years ago could be brought back to life. Once again, let's go back to the relativity of time. For Allah, millions of years do not mean much. Man's body after death goes back to earth and gets absorbed into it. If Allah can create human beings and then give them death, is it not easy for him to recreate or reassemble the body and give life again? He has the power to do anything. There are several statements in the Quran about resurrection. Surah 50, 42. The day when they will hear a mighty blast in very truth, that will be the day of resurrection. Surah 75, Ayah 3. Does man think that we cannot assemble his bones? For, nay, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. The purpose behind the resurrection is to compensate for our earthly deeds with perfect justice. Will we be raised back to life with our body? This question has been asked by all. The Quranic statements discuss the recombination of the body for resurrection. Hadith also explains this phenomenon. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Between the two blowings of the trumpet, there will be forty. The people said, O oh, Abu Huraira, forty days? I refused to reply. They said, 40 years? 
I refused to reply and added, Everything of the human body will decay, except the Cossack's bone of the tail, and from that bone Allah will reconstruct the whole body. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 6, number 338. From this hadith, it must be noted that there is time interval between the first trumpet sound when all creations are destroyed and the second trumpet sound when the resurrection occurs. How long is this time interval? It is not clear. It could be a long period or a short period. Number 337, narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, I will be the first to raise my head after the second blowing of the trumpet and will see Moses hanging the throne, and I will not know whether he had been in that state all the time or after the blowing of the trumpet. Sahih al-Bukhari. It is generally believed that we will be raised back to life with our bodies. However, what happens to our body system in the new creation is not known to us at this time. Only Allah knows who has the infinite knowledge and power. The earth will be changed to a different earth, and the heavens will also be changed to different heavens. What will these new creations look like? We do not know. One day the earth will be changed to a different earth, and so will be the heavens, and men will be marshaled forth before Allah, the One, the Irresistible. The trillions and trillions of souls will be assembled on this day. This will be a huge assembly. The new creation will be different from the world that we know now, and our life will be eternal in the new world. It is impossible to have a concept of the new creation in our present life on earth. However, Islam describes the characteristics of the new world with symbols and metaphors. In computer systems, data retrieval brings back or recovers the information in its original form from the storage or memory system. The information is displayed on the screen or printed on the paper. All the data of our deeds will be retrieved from the registers after resurrection so that we see and acknowledge what each one of us did during our lifetime on Earth. It will be like playing a videotape which shows our deeds in real action. What an amazing book or recording is this. It leaves out nothing small or great, but takes account thereof. They will find all that they did placed before them, and not one will your Lord treat with injustice. The Holy Quran, Surah 18, Ayah 49. Allah does not need the data retrieval for himself. He already knows everything from his infinite knowledge. Our deeds are displayed before us for our own acknowledgement, before he pronounces the judgment. This is his finest judicial procedure. In this world, one can hide the deeds, but on the day of judgment, deeds are in the open and cannot be hidden. That day shall we set a seal on their mouths, but their hands will speak to us, and their feet bear witness to all that they did. Quran, Surah 36, Ayah 65. When those come to you who believe in our signs, say, Peace be unto you. Your Lord has inscribed for himself the rule of mercy. Verily, if any of you did evil in ignorance, and thereafter repented and amended his conduct, lo, he is oft forgiving, most merciful. Quran, Surah 6, Ayah 54. The recording system during our life on earth records our repentance also along with our sins and good deeds. Allah may forgive the sins of a person who repents. However, repentance after death or on the day of judgment is not accepted. Repentance is valid only till the moment of death. How will justice be done on the day of judgment? There will be people who did both good deeds and bad deeds while they were on earth. What is the criteria of justice for these people? This question is very well answered in the Holy Quran. We shall set up scales for justice on Resurrection Day, and no soul will be dealt with unjustly in any way. 
even if the weight of a mustard seed should exist, we would bring it along. Sufficient are we as reckoners. Quran, Surah 21, Ayah 47. From this statement, we can understand that each deed has a weight. The example of a weighing balance has been given to weigh all our good deeds and the bad deeds. Any deed as small as an atom's weight will be weighed. Such is the accuracy of the judgment procedure. Among the good deeds, there are both light and heavy deeds. Among the bad deeds, there are light and heavy deeds. It seems there will be a matrix of deed names with their weights. Then he whose balance of good deeds will be found heavy will be in a life of good pleasure and satisfaction. But he whose balance of good deeds will be found light will have his home in a bottomless pit. And what will explain to you what this is? It is a fire blazing fiercely. Surah 101, Ayah 6 through 11, the Quran. What deeds are heavy and what deeds are light? Our intents and actions are so many in number, it is extremely difficult to make a tabulation of deeds. Only Allah knows the weights of these deeds. However, we can project the relative weights of some of the deeds we know. For example, the five pillars of Islam. 1. Faith in one God and Muhammad as his last messenger. 2. Five times a day prayers. 3. Fasting in Ramadan. 4. Charity, zakah. 5. Pilgrimage to Mecca are considered deeds with very heavy weight. Muslim Brotherhood, unity, helping Muslims who are crying for help, are very heavy good deeds. There are other numerous good deeds like marrying, raising a family, building a mosque, doing justice, education, and so on. Saying Assalamu Alaikum is a simple good deed and has its own weight. Now let us look at some bad deeds. Shirk, worshipping more than one God, adding partners to God, is the greatest sin in Islam. It has the highest weight which may topple or offset the weight of all the good deeds. Interest transactions, adultery, cheating in business, murder, mischief, stealing, changing the religion of Islam or distorting it, rejecting Allah, and so on, have heavy weights. These weights, if added up, may offset the balance of good deeds. However, it must be noted that the final judgment is up to him. He would forgive anyone he pleases. But we must not take any chances. We must pray for his forgiveness. It is important to note that the following hadith clarifies that Allah's mercy is the final step for salvation. Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, 6761. Abu Harara reported Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, as saying, there is none whose deeds alone would entitle him to get into paradise. It was said to him, Allah's messenger, not even you? Thereupon he said, not even, I but that my Lord wraps me in mercy. Sorting On a mighty day, a day when all mankind will stand before the Lord of the worlds, Quran Surah 83, the people will be sorted into three categories on the day of judgment as per the Holy Quran. 1. The companions of the right hand. These are righteous people who will be happy. 2. The companions of the left hand. These are the evildoers who will be in great agony. 3. Those foremost in faith. They will be the nearest to Allah. The Holy Quran further states, Anyone who is given his book in his right hand will be called to account with an easy reckoning and return joyfully to his people while anyone who is given his book behind his back will appeal to be blotted out and will roast in the blaze. The judgment for each soul will be rendered by Allah only. However, after judgment is rendered to the sinners for hell, an appeal procedure will be adopted before Allah to forgive the sinners who basically believed in Him as one and only God with no partners. This procedure is known as intercession as you may know, intercession will be done only on the Day of Judgment, after the judgment is given by the Almighty. Allah would have granted permission to some whose statements were acceptable to Him. Who will be the intercessor for the Muslim sinners? The Hadith answers this question very well. Allah's Apostle said, They will come to Me, and I will ask My Lord's permission. And when I see Him, 
I will fall down in prostration to him, and he will leave me in that state as long as he will, and then I will be addressed. Raise up your head, O Muhammad. Ask and your request will be granted say, and your saying will be listened to. Intercede, and your intercession will be accepted. Then I will raise my head, and I will glorify and praise my Lord. With invocation he will teach me, and then I will intercede. Allah will fix a limit for me, only a certain type of people for whom I can intercede. And I will take them out of the hellfire, and let them enter paradise. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 6, Hadith 3 Please see the Hadith book for the complete Hadith. It is quite inspiring. The Hadith finally states that Prophet Muhammad's intercession will occur four times when all will be removed from hell, with the exception of those whom the Quran has imprisoned therein. This means the judgment is only by Allah and no one else. Some Muslims may stay in hell for some time, and then they may be transferred to paradise. The deeds of anyone are not transferable. We will stand on our own, and we will be entirely responsible for our own deeds. No father, no mother, no relatives, and no friends will come to our help. The final home is eternal. There is no aging, there is no death. There ends our journey. Allah sent us on the earth on a test program. Those who passed his test enter paradise, and those who did not pass the test enter hell. It is impossible to find out what it will really look like in paradise or hell. The Holy Quran describes the contents of paradise and hell in a metaphorical language or symbolic language. The dimensions and characteristics of the eternal home are described to us in the earth language to make us sense what it will be like. The subjects are depicted by earthly subjects known to us and which bear similarities. Righteous people will be near Allah, but they will never be equal to Allah. This is not a cycle of evolution. Human life has a sequence of events prescribed by Allah. The dimensions of paradise and hell are highly magnified and enhanced. The eternal home may be bigger than the entire universe. As per Hadith in Sahih Muslim, there is a tree in paradise. To cross the shade of the tree, it may take more than 100 years. It has been written in Hadith that when a person is entering paradise, a beautiful woman with large eyes will greet and welcome him by shaking hands with him. If one of her fingers is shown on the earth dimensions, it will shine like the sun. If her hair is shown on earth, it will cover the east and the west. The Holy Quran describes paradise as a home of peace, security, with no death, no fatigue. The gardens of eternity will have rivers flowing. The people of paradise will be reclining on thrones of dignity with their associates under the cool shades. Beside them will be chaste women. Every fruit will be there for them. They will have anything they call for. In paradise, people will meet their relatives who also were righteous. The people of paradise will see angels surrounding the throne of Allah and singing glory and praise to him. There is everlasting bliss. It is written in Hadith that Allah will never be annoyed with the people of paradise. There would be a tent made of a pearl whose height would be 60 miles. The people will live in great mansions with the finest foods. They will eat and drink, but would neither spit, nor pass water, nor void excrement, nor suffer catarrh. The Hadith mentions that the residents of paradise will look to the upper apartment of paradise as you see the planets in the sky. It has also been reported in a Hadith, Sahih Muslim, there will be bounties which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and no human heart has ever perceived them. The people of hell will be in great misery and pain. Those who reject our signs we shall soon cast into the fire. As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for fresh skins that they may taste the penalty. For Allah is exalted in power, wise. Quran, Surah 4, Ayah 56. Hellfire has been frequently stated in the noble Quran for the people of hell. The fire cannot be endured, nor will it leave the person. Death will come to them 
but they will not die. Their faces and garments will be covered with fire. They will drink boiling water and will be in the shades of black smoke. Hell is guarded by nineteen angels. Hypocrites will be at the bottom of hell, the most ferocious location. There are seven gates to hell. The prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, said, The fire which the sons of Adam would burn is only one-seventieth part of the fire of hell. This statement clearly indicates how fierce hell is. Paradise is the final home for the righteous, and hell is the final home for the rejecters of Allah. All the teachings in Islam converge toward the last day, or the day of judgment. It is a formula which will take us to the final salvation, if we apply it in our life on this planet Earth. Time once gone will never come back. To conclude this presentation, let us pray. O oh Allah, save us from the misery of this world, save us from the torment of death, and save us from hellfire on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, forgive our sins with your mercy, and admit us into paradise, the final home of eternity filled with your blessings, the home of peace, the home of security, and the home of happiness. Amen. that you have just witnessed the last day is available to you for only nineteen ninety five to order your copy please visit our website at www.islamic-video.com or you may send your request to Islamic Video Productions Incorporation P.O. Box 7000-365 Rancho Palos Verdes California 90275 or you may call us at area code 310-539-6022. Once again, welcome to the Muslim TV of America. Today we're going to present to you a wonderful documentary called Muhammad the Last Messenger. This excellent video documentary was produced and directed by Zahir Ahmed. Now let us watch together. كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان Thank you. 
May Allah's peace and blessings be on you. The universe consists of matter and operating rules known as the order. There is nothing random in the universe. There is predictability. Since both the matter and the order need one another, there must be a creator of the matter and the order. This creator is Allah, the Almighty, who is one and only one worthy of worship. He is the creator and sustainer of all the worlds known and unknown to mankind. He is the most compassionate, has no partners, no son, and no family. No vision can grasp him. Human beings have been in need of guidance from time to time. Allah, out of his mercy and love, has sent his messengers and prophets to guide the people to his way. All civilizations and groups of people on this planet Earth have been sent messengers and prophets. They were born among their own people, spoke their language, and provided the commands of Allah to them. They were given miracles, but they were not divine. They were human beings. The prophets were merely verbal warners, and they identified to the people the good and the evil. Whereas the messengers, in addition to being prophets, were given revelations or books, the messengers applied the message of Allah in their societies. We do not really know how many messengers and prophets have been born since the dawn of human civilization on this planet, but they are in large numbers. A few of the messengers known to us are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, peace be upon all of them. However, the last messenger of Allah was yet to come. The divine books like the Torah and Bible predicted the arrival of the last messenger who was generally known as Ahmad in those scriptures. God, who is known as Allah in Islam, never comes to the people in the form of a human being, and there is no other God besides him. We would like to thank you for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed our program. You can contact Muslim TV of America at 310-539-6022. 310-539-6022. We will see you on the next segment of Muslim TV of America. Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you.